How safe is laser hair removal? Is it really permanent? If not, how long does it last? Is it painful? And is it safe to have it done on your bikini area? Maybe you've heard that it only works for some people. Is it safe on darker skin types? I've personally have had it done and now offer it to my clients. Let's find out how safe it really is and is it right for you. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Claudia. I own an aesthetic clinic and on this channel, we explore the science behind skincare and aesthetics and strategies to level up so that you can achieve maximum growth in business and in life. So what is laser hair removal and how does it work? Many people turn to laser hair removal for many reasons. The pure convenience of it allowing you to save countless hours, days in a year, allowing you to spend time on things that you would much rather be doing than wasting time shaving. Others suffer from ingrown hairs making life uncomfortable. Others simply hate the sensation of razor burns. Maybe you're tired of having to spend money on razors and other consumables on a monthly basis. The problem is it sounds like surgery and who wants to have surgery done? Like, I'll be going under the laser. I'll just accept ingrown hairs are a way of life and just something that I'll have to deal with. Or this is gonna cost me an arm and a leg. I'd rather be buying razors till the end of days. Plus, shaving doesn't hurt. Sure, maybe you'll get a nick here and there, but surely lasers painful, right? It sounds crazy invasive, so it must be sore. In fact, why don't we ask my friend? Shaving isn't bad. I look forward to it every day. In fact, it's actually the highlight of my day. In denial, my troll. Let's start off with what is laser exactly? We won't get too technical here, but LASER is actually an acronym which stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Now granted, that probably sounded a little bit technical, but it's really simple actually. Lasers are basically artificially created concentrated beams of light that have many use cases in the world, from cutting diamonds, aiding in performing surgeries, and complete non-invasive treatments like laser hair removal. So by concentrating the light, you can increase the energy that it gives off, making it more powerful. Lasers basically do the opposite of an ordinary household light bulb, where the purpose of the light bulb is actually to disperse the light in as much area as possible to create light for us to be able to see in the dark. Now light travels in waves and the distance between the peaks in the waves is called wavelengths. These wavelengths are measured in nanometers and this basically lets us control the depth at which the laser penetrates the skin in this case. This enables us to manipulate the light for our individual needs. Now in terms of laser hair removal we ideally need the laser the wavelength to be between 755 nanometers through to 1064 nanometers. Now this is the optimum range for laser hair removal depending on a person's skin type whether they have lighter skin or darker skin. So laser hair removal works by sending the light of a laser through the pigment in the hair which is known as melanin. The energy from the light then converts to heat which then damages the hair follicle which prevents further hair growth from happening. Now the magic in the science and biology in this case is that we are actually able to target and heat the hair follicle with minimum effect on the surrounding tissue of the skin, therefore not heating the skin so much itself. This is why it's important also not to wax or pluck the hairs out before a treatment because there will be no hair there and obviously if there's no hair within the root then the laser can't target the follicle. This is also why hair with no pigment or very little melanin which in this case with white or gray hair will not be able to get treated via this method as it has no pigment in it for the laser to target. There is an alternative treatment for gray hairs and it's called electrolysis and while it is still possible to treat very blonde and red hairs, it requires slightly more attention because the melanin is actually poorly absorbed by the laser. A quick word though, a lot of people get confused with laser and IPL, which stands for intense pulse light. So they are very similar at a basic level, but IPL is not a laser. You can think of it more of a flash lamp, but that We'll need an entire new video to explain the comparison and I'll link to that video if you're interested in the details of what's the difference between the two. Now, laser hair removal, if done with the correct laser and the treatment 
performed by a trained professional qualified to do so is clinically completely safe. Also, during treatment, you should be provided with specialized safety glasses or goggles to protect your eyes. So you will need to shave before you receive your treatment and this is because the excess hair can cause burning on the surface layer of the skin. I'll link to another video that will show you the exact in-depth process of what it is actually like getting a treatment done from beginning to end. Now I know you're wondering is it really permanent? Well the short answer is no but it can become extremely close to becoming permanent. A better way of thinking about it is that laser hair removal can cause permanent hair reduction. Basically it's a long lasting form of hair removal. However the hair may regrow particularly if the hair follicle is damaged and not completely destroyed during the procedure. Also, there are instances where new hair growth can be stimulated as a result of hormones. An example of this would be during pregnancy or taking certain medications or even growth hormones. Now, multiple treatments are required and on average you should experience a 10% hair reduction per session. Now, these sessions should be spaced out for smaller areas you're looking at four weeks and for larger areas on the body you're looking at six weeks. Now this is because hair grows in stages and this enables the laser then to target the new hair follicles in the growth stage. So if you come too soon after you've received a session basically it's pretty much going to be ineffective because you've already targeted those follicles in your previous session so you would just be doing it again and not on the new follicles. Depending on the laser and because every person's body is unique and skin types are different you should see or shall I say be hair free on average around 8 to 12 sessions per area. It could be more or less just depending on your own body. So many people can go years without seeing hair regrowth and even then you could go for what they call maintenance treatments effectively topping up on new subtle hair growth that could occur in the future. So what does hair removal feel like? Is it painful? This is a very popular question and I myself like many others were pleasantly surprised. So many lasers feel different but since technology has advanced it has gotten better. What it has been described in the past feeling like is that if you had to take an elastic band and basically snapped it against your skin like that. However today technology has progressed and come a long way and it feels a lot better. With new methods such as contact cooling it makes the laser experience a whole lot more comfortable. Again not all lasers feel the same but generally if you use a reputable laser manufacturer all the technology is relatively similar so in this instant this blue part of the laser gets pretty cold it gets to about 4 degrees celsius or 39 degrees fahrenheit and the point of this is basically that it obviously cools the skin during treatment okay so let's fire up this machine and basically i'll let you know how it feels right now Safety glasses as always. Just excuse the noise as it might get slightly loud. So what I'm gonna do is I'll stand up for you guys and this is basically the, the laser hand piece over here, right? So you've got some of the ultrasound gel on there. And what I'll do is I'm gonna show you guys. Contact. How it gets warm. What I can tell you is that what it feels like to me is a warm sensation gliding over my skin, almost like a hot stone massage. In fact, I know clients who have actually fallen asleep while having the process done. There's the contact cooling. And that's pretty much it. Okay, now that I turned off the machine, that's basically where I have it done and that is ultrasound gel that I'm basically just wiping off at the moment. Now I'd like to know have you ever had laser hair removal done? 
What was your experience? I'd like to know, leave it in the comments. So I know what you're thinking now. Is it safe to have laser hair removal on your private parts? Hands down, the most popular area treated is the ladies bikini area. In terms of the technology, it is perfectly safe and I might add that it does not cause infertility as the laser itself barely penetrates one millimeter into the skin and your ovaries are nowhere near that depth. And even if it did, the laser targets pigment. Okay, but what if you're already pregnant? Can you have it done while you are pregnant? Although laser hair removal is generally considered a safe procedure, in fact, it's just as safe as hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel if you want more videos like this. Jokes aside though, doctors and dermatologists advise against it because no studies have actually been done where they, they have tested it. And because of that, it's inconclusive if it's safe for mothers and babies. So rather not. It would also be pointless as pregnancy stimulates hormones and causes hair growth in some cases. So it's kind of, you know, to having the opposite effect. Now, laser hair removal works better on people with fair skin and dark hair. But why is this? The contrast between the color of the skin and the color of the pigment, melanin, in the hair follicle is what makes it easy for the laser to target. You can think of it like it's the same reason as if on a very sunny day you're wearing all black, your clothes heat up a lot quicker because on the darker colors, the, the light gets absorbed. While if you were wearing all white, the light is basically getting reflected. That's why you'll feel a lot more cooler. It's not absorbing all that light energy. Now, this doesn't mean that it doesn't work on dark skins. There have been many advances in the laser technology and it is perfectly safe for all skin types, but not all lasers are created equal. So when you go, if you go to a place, make sure that the lasers are the right lasers to use. Go to a credible place and also make sure that those lasers that they use have been FDA cleared. Now, for interest sake, the laser that is best for treating darker skin types is actually called the ND YAG. Now, it, this has a, a wavelength of 1064 nanometers and basically why it is more optimum is because the melanin is not highly absorbed by the light as other lasers wavelengths. Because of this, the wavelength can safely treat darker skin types because it deposits its energy deeper into the dermis without relying as much on the melanin to do so. With the use of contact cooling, which I mentioned earlier, it helps prevent superficial burns and also enabled other lasers to treat darker skin types such as the 810 nanometer. And nowadays, these will be safe and just as effective as the NDA laser. Now, something that I also hear about and people are slightly apprehensive about is that they are worried if it can cause cancer or they've heard it or they've heard it from somebody else that said something. Now, I think it's more of a myth that laser hair removal can cause cancer. In fact, according to the Skincare Foundation, I'll put a link down in the description, the procedure is sometimes used to treat certain precancerous lesions, plus the minimal amount of radiation that is only being exacted onto the surface layer of the skin. So it does not cause cancer. Now, if you have been diagnosed with cancer previously and have undergone treatment for it, dermatologists and doctors recommend that you wait until your skin's integrity is fully recovered from medications such as chemotherapy. Now, this can take anything from six months and more, but you have to ask and speak to your medical professional. So is it worth it? Lasers for hair removal are safe. The science is there. If you are the right candidate and have it done, you most likely will have significant hair reduction. You won't have to deal with those uncomfortable ingrown hairs anymore. Bet you might even feel more confidence in your skin. And although it might seem expensive and be an initial upfront cost, it will save you in the long run. And not to mention the extra free time you've just treated yourself to. Sleep in for those extra minutes or have a nice cup of coffee instead of spending your time shaving. However, again, if you're interested in having the treatment done, go to a reputable company that uses the correct lasers that have been FDA approved. 
Also, don't be afraid to ask questions. In most places, we'll do test patches, which is similar to what I have just done, where you actually get to feel the laser on your skin. Also, make sure that the person operating the laser is fully qualified to do so. With great power comes responsibility. With that, now you can possibly think about having laser hair removal done and know that it's not as intimidating as initially you might have thought it might be. With that, check out our other videos for more information on laser hair removal.